Some viewers may find this disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi, my loves. It's Destiny Choice, and you're watching Choice TV. So for today's video, I'm back with another Unpopular Opinions video, and I'm back again to, per usual, piss the internet off. You guys know the drill. Because, of course, every time I do these Unpopular Opinions, they ruffle people's feathers, people get upset, make response videos, and get very angry. But it is what it is, and I said what the fuck I said, and I'm not taking it back. Unless you could probably change my mind, but you might not change my mind, because these are Unpopular Opinions for a reason. So let's get right into it. Will Smith was dead ass wrong for what he did to Chris Rock and so was Chris Rock. Both parties were wrong at the end of the day and I hate the fact, the fact that people are only giving Chris all the bullshit or giving Will Smith all the nonsense. They're both wrong. And I also will say that another unpopular opinion I have is that Will Smith is full of shit. The fact that he got on stage when he accepted his Oscar to literally say that he's a public figure and he has feelings too and he wants to protect women and we got to protect unprotected groups. His bitch ass pulled a Megan Thee Stallion. Megan Thee Stallion pulled the same shit and guess what? People bought that shit. And guess what? Once Megan Thee Stallion released her album, she stopped giving a fuck. He should have had the same energy for the same man that was claiming to have fucked his wife and into an entanglement. My next unpopular opinion is Everybody and their damn mom needs a VPN. Thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring today's video. If you guys aren't sure what a VPN is, a VPN is a virtual private network that protects you and your server from hackers, weirdos, and can even award you the opportunity to even save money. Now, I'm someone that likes to book my flights last minute because sometimes flights are expensive and I don't have time for that. But did you guys know that a lot of airlines use very tricky, weird tactics where if you're constantly looking for flights, they'll charge you the most expensive price if they know you're constantly looking for flights? So if ExpressVPN, it's literally like putting a brick wall in front of you and you're literally going to be awarded some of the best deals with a VPN that protects your connection and protects you from sites that are trying to prey on your IP address. On top of that, I enjoy using ExpressVPN because if I'm ever out of the country, if I'm ever in a place like the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, I like to keep up with my shows like Euphoria. And personally, I can keep up with a lot of these shows if I'm in a foreign country where they literally ban, block, or don't allow these shows. And that's where VPN comes in. With ExpressVPN, you'll be able to protect your connection and you won't have to worry about being in a certain country or living in a certain state in order to watch a certain show. You can literally be sitting at home, on the couch, by yourself, trying to watch a particular show that's only available in Korea, only available in Denmark, or only available in the UK. There's a lot of people out there who have no life and will do anything they can try to steal your information. And that's why I recommend y'all use ExpressVPN to protect yourselves. Use my link, Choice, to get three months for free. You can't find that anywhere else. And also, all the information will be in the description box down below and in the pinned comment. Make sure you guys check out ExpressVPN, protect your information, save money on flights. Check out ExpressVPN, use my code CHOICE, and all the information is in the description box down below. Kylie Jenner looks a little crazy. She's really ODing with the surgery. I know people always look at her like she's so beautiful, but she's ODing with the surgery, and due to all the surgery Kylie is getting, she out here aging like cream cheese and shit. If you can't afford to tip your Uber Eats driver, and you can't afford to tip your DoorDash driver, and you can't afford to tip your Postmates driver, your Grubhub driver, please get your lazy ass up and go pick up your food your damn self. Because if you can't afford to tip your driver, you can't afford to eat out. I'm just saying, look, I get it. Times are tough and you don't really owe anybody shit. But please just go pick up your own damn food. I get it. A lot of these drivers should just pick better jobs if they don't like the wages that they're getting in certain states and in certain areas. But... Please tip your damn Uber Eats, Grubhub, and Postmates driver. You don't owe them shit, but just pick up your own damn food if you can't tip them. When children run away from home, parents need to be investigated and should be legally required to endure family therapy before getting legal custody of their children. I should have seen news clips of kids running away at the age of 15, 14, 13, 12. This is horrifying, especially when you see the parents crying on TV, making the fuss, and saying that they want their baby to come home and acting like this. It is now starting to appear that all the grief and emotion shown by the teen's mother was not what it seems. Jamie Moore went public asking for help to locate her daughter, who went missing back on October 14th. The case drew the attention of the public, police, the Essex County Prosecutor's Office, the Sheriff's Office, and the FBI, until a break happened yesterday when the 14-year-old was found in Harlem on 111th Street. Once she talked to the NYPD, she revealed who she was and said she did not want to return home. Jamie Moore had even started a GoFundMe page, which raised nearly $10,000. Now she is facing two counts of child endangerment. She's a good girl, please, please, please. 
It is now starting to appear that all the grief and emotion shown by the teen's mother was not what it seems. Some of these parents are playing victim and they're not telling the complete truth. Medea does not need to come back. I don't know what the fuck Tyler Perry was thinking. Medea does not need to come back. He should have kept her big fat ass in the casket and kept her dead. What the hell was he thinking? Do people even watch Tyler Perry films anymore? Men experience postpartum depression just like how women experience postpartum depression. And just like how the woman changes spiritually, physically, mentally, so does the male. So people don't talk about the depression that the man deals with when the kids come into the household. And there should also be products that cater to men who deal with postpartum depression because just like how the woman is dealing with postpartum depression, so is the man because they're both changing at the same exact time and their lives have altered. When you have a kid, your mental is changing, your life is changing, you're changing spiritually, physically, you're questioning your world, and you're questioning if you even want this kid anymore. Jocelyn's cabaret was a joke gone wrong. Jocelyn genuinely hates women and I genuinely believe that with all my heart. And I think she generally hates women because of all the turmoil Stevie put her through. Jocelyn Hernandez is full of shit with that Jocelyn Cabaret show. It is not about women empowerment. It is not about uplifting women, giving women a platform. She just wants to be the star of the show and she wants to surround herself around a whole bunch of train wreck ass people to make herself feel better. And you gotta watch for people like that. People who surround themselves with a whole bunch of train wreck ass people and love giving them advice to make themselves feel better and feel good so that way they don't have to feel so bad about being ain't shit them damn selves so they hang around people who aren't shit at all. Instagram is dead and will eventually run its course in the next five years. They turn that shit into a big ass shopping outlet and it's literally a news feed with a whole bunch of discombobulated nonsense and a whole bunch of mess. The whole shit is a whole mess. It's out of order. Now they're adding video reels. Sometimes I be wanting to watch a video for like 12 seconds and then I be having to click on a whole fucking reel. Instagram is a mess and Instagram will not be here in the next 10 years. Race should not be asked for or calculated on an application, on a student application, none of that stuff. Why would somebody apply for a job their race even matters? I get now that they have an option that says I prefer not to answer, but not all applications have that. They need to eliminate that shit as a whole. It's stupid and it shouldn't be calculated. It is not Joe Biden's fault why gas prices are going up. Everywhere you go, people have been constantly taking pictures of their gas prices going up, complaining, saying, oh my God, oh wow, this is what happens when you vote blue. I get it. A lot of times the world gets affected depending on what political party you support, depending on what country you live in and the state of the world that we're in. Okay, we've got stickers. Uh, it says, I did that. It's President Biden. And he, say, he says, I did that. So when the next person who gets their gas and they, they get sticker shock, they're going to remember that President Biden did that. Here we go. Right next to that $4.67 a gallon gasoline in California. I don't like his ass and I don't think he was the lesser of two evils, but it's not his fault why gas prices are going up. If you clean yourself and clean your ass with this stingy ass piece of soap, you dirty as fuck. Kim Kardashian and Kanye West are pulling a publicity stunt and I am not falling for that shit again. This whole Julia Fox nonsense, them getting a divorce, Kanye complaining about the co-parenting situation and then being literally photographed with the damn kids, I don't believe that shit at all. I think the whole Pete Davidson thing is, whole, is a whole bunch of nonsense and I think all that is being done just to promote their new struggle ass show that's coming in April. I think all that shit is being done on purpose just to promote their new show that's coming out on Hulu, their whole revamp show, it's all a stunt and I am not falling for that shit again. Tasha K ain't going nowhere. She lost damn near 10,000 followers after the verdict was read during her and, and the whole Cardi B situation and I will say this, Tasha K is gonna be around for a very long time. Clout is a new crack, and this whole entire scandal has turned Tasha K into a very well-respected and very well-hated mainstream celebrity. Tasha K is going to be around for a very long time. She's an evil genius, and I see her lasting for years on end. Simon Cowell was not that bad at all. Most people are just fake as fuck and don't understand how the industry works. Simon Cowell was only giving everyone a taste of what actually happens behind the scenes in the music industry. Yes, Simon Cowell was an asshole, but he kept it real with these people. A lot of us felt the exact same way, we just wouldn't be brave enough to say it. Simon Cowell was a very good idol, and he was real as fuck, and he was very, very necessary. If I was looking to hire a rug, I would hire you tomorrow. Joe Rogan only got backlash on all those resurfaced clips coming into fruition because at the end of the day, his thoughts on the damn jab is what affected it. All this shit he said was problematic as fuck and I will say that corporate America was trying their best to rile up the black community. Because let's be honest here, he offended the trans community, he offended the vaccination community, and all I will say is this, 
None of that shit worked. But once all them clips resurfaced of him coming for black folks and making slick little jokes about black folks, this whole cancel Joe Rogan debacle only came out of nowhere because the trans community was still mad as fuck at him. Right along with the goddamn jab community was still mad at him for his thoughts. That's why that shit came into fruition. They tried everything and nothing worked. And guess what? Even even black outrage didn't work. I wonder what they'll pull out of their ass next. It quickly went from Joe Rogan is anti-vax to Joe Rogan is transphobic to Joe Rogan is anti-black all the way back to, yeah, guys, don't forget, he's anti-black. And yes, also remember, he also hates vaccinations. And also, guys, he also hates trans folks. It was like, whoa, 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 bitch. We talked about that months ago. Why are y'all bringing that shit up again? Renting an apartment or home is not a scam at all. Not everyone is ready for a damn house. Renting, in fact, is an investment into yourself if you're young. If you're young and got no damn kids or you got one or two kids and you're not ready for a damn house, there's nothing wrong with renting. Focus on your goals. Focus on your ambitions. Focus on saving money. And eventually, when the time is right, you'll alternate to a home. I don't really see Megan Thee Stallion last another two years. Black Lives Matter is still a scam that was weaponized to get the orange man out of office and keep the same people in power. I made a video addressing that bullshit involving BLM a long ass time ago. Please feel free to watch it, but at the end of the day, that shit was a weaponized scam. And guess what? Where they at? Where they at now? Oh, I, I remember. They'll be back when the next election comes around. On top of that, on top of that, where the fuck were they? What, what were they doing with that damn money? BLM made more than $100 million. What the hell did they do with that damn money? Talking about, oh, defund the police and let's allocate the millions and millions of dollars to low, low undervalued, um, underprivileged communities. But what about the fucking $300 million plus dollars they fucking made? Huh? Huh? Uh, huh? The IRS has been on their ass for the past couple of months. They recently have been condemned by several states, with California being one of them. And it's going to get very interesting in the next couple of months when people get to see their income statements right along with when they submit their tax forms to the IRS. So all I will say is please be sure to be on the lookout for my next video in the next couple of months. All we do know is that many of the head people in charge were buying homes, many of the head people in charge were pocketing a lot of that money, and we still don't know where most of it went. We do know that it went to political campaigns, we do know that it went towards um, lining up the pockets of the head people in charge, and we do know that the three founders all walked away from the organization with one of them buying a big ass house, getting a new job as a writer, and the other one condemning the entire organization in an interview recently. I, I haven't been at BLM since 2017. So um, the weird part for me about this summer was that this thing that I helped to build is all over the place. <laughs> you know, it was the same stuff. It was like you had people running for president who wanted to use Black Lives Matter but didn't want to talk about how they were going to make Black Lives Matter. So they would talk about the middle class or they would talk about HBCUs. I was like, what the fuck does that have to do with like putting food on people's tables and getting people health care? And we deserve that. And because our voices aren't in that room, they can get away with that. They can show up and eat fried chicken and check off the box that they talk to black people. And that's unacceptable. I'll support the individuals that have actually been wronged. I don't believe in giving homeless people any fucking money at all. I don't want I don't want a homeless person to ask me for money for five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars, and then turn around and go buy some crack on the street or go buy some booze or some cigarettes. Look, I get it. At the end of the day, some of y'all may say that's between them and God, but bitch, no. I'm keeping my motherfucking money and I will walk right past them like I ain't fucking see them and I will come right back with a damn sandwich, a blanket, or I'll come right the fuck back with a damn job application. I'm not giving a homeless person any of my fucking money at all because I've made that mistake in the past. And even then, sometimes it's very difficult to want to help them because a lot of them sometimes won't even take the help. You give them a sandwich, they'll be like, oh no, I'm good, I don't want it. Or, eh, no, 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 Like a lot of them don't even say thank you. Some of them got bad attitudes. A lot of them have this entitled personality, this bad attitude, and it makes you wonder why a lot of them are homeless. And yes, I know, not all homeless people are drug addicts and bums or panhandlers, but the truth is, give them a job application, a blanket, food, water, some words of encouragement, a therapy session, or hell, even give them a place in your apartment to live. But don't give them any fucking money, because guess what? When you give somebody money and you give them an easy ass handout, they're gonna feel like you just enabled their behavior. It's bad enough that you're already giving them shit for free, right? But it's bad enough that you're giving them money and you're teaching them to be complacent with that. 
That's all I got to say. And don't hit me with that. Well, life is hard. Life is hard. But what about you, though? You have a roof over your head. You you go to work every single day. You go to work every single week. Been there, done that, was a child stuck in that situation with their parent who was irresponsible. But one thing I'll say is that's why I value hard work. And that's why you should value hard work and prioritizing your time. At the end of the day, a lot of homeless people are homeless for a reason because many of them made poor choices. Right? A lot of you guys want to admit it or not, many of them made poor choices. Pick yourself up by the bootstraps and go build some lucrative skills because guess what? Even when I'm depressed, you're depressed, or whoever's around you is depressed, don't we all still got to go to work? Don't some of you guys go to work with in a bad mood? Don't some of y'all be irritated when you got to get up and go to work? We still got to all put our clothes on, use the bathroom, and pay our bills just like everyone else. And I don't see why a man or a woman with two fucking arms and two legs can't do the same. Bitch, have you ever been in a foreign country? When I go to foreign countries, I be seeing little ass kids as young as 9, 10, 11, 12 in Latin America, in Mexico. Kids as young as fucking 7 years old selling empanadas, braiding hair, selling figurines, selling toys, trying to negotiate. They be hustling and working their ass off to help their parents pay bills. And I don't understand why, I don't understand why a grown ass motherfucker in a big ass city or a big ass state, westernized country like America or in the UK or in Canada can't get they big buck ass up and go do the same. It may sound insensitive, but it's a dead ass truth. If you don't believe me, then go to a foreign country and go see how many kids are hustling. Jesse Smollett did not get enough time at all. He can talk about how his story has always stayed consistent and his dumbass siblings can defend him all they want. His story's full of shit. Ain't no two motherfuckers from Wakanda gonna tie your ass up, put a fucking noose around your neck, and throw bleach on you. That just doesn't make any sense and that doesn't even happen. Saweetie is being forced on us. In my opinion, Saweetie would really be better off just being an actress or being on Love & Hip Hop. Or maybe a judge on a TV show. Or maybe just a damn YouTuber, but Sui just, she just, she's just not built for it, and that's fine. Flaking on people without offering to reschedule is disrespectful, tasteless, and immature as fuck. Now, I get it. Things happen. But if you're going to flake on somebody or flake on plans last minute, the least you can do is flake on them a day in advance two days in advance or 10 hours in advance. Do not flake on somebody literally one to two hour in advance or right when you're late. That is childish as fuck and very disrespectful and you need your fucking ass slapped for that. It's not right to flake on plans when you literally make plans with that person that same day. It's childish. I was in that predicament on point and I grew the fuck up and realized how childish and disrespectful it is. Don't fucking make plans with me and then when I hit you up, not reply. Don't make plans with me, and then right when I hit you up, be like, oh, yeah, I forgot. No, bitch. No. That's childish and immature as fuck, and you need to grow up, and you need your ass slapped. Busy my ass. People make time for what the fuck they want to make time for, and if you didn't care enough to write down our plans or to remember our plans, then maybe you don't really fuck with me like that, and that's perfectly fine. But, bitch, don't waste my time and expect for me to hang out with you when it's convenient. Socialism is a scam, and I'm not buying it. At the end of the day... It is not my responsibility why your ass don't have health care. It is not my responsibility why your ass don't have child care. I don't give a fuck what Europe got going on. I don't give a fuck what Switzerland, Poland, and all these countries like Denmark got going on. It is not my responsibility that you don't have child care or health care. Bitch, get insurance and pay for that shit your damn self at the end of the day. And don't tell me that I'm selfish because, bitch, it's not selfish for me to want to keep my fucking money and my taxes in my damn pocket at the end of the day. My money is my motherfucking money. And y'all can complain about capitalism all you want. But you're going to say that as you stroll your big ass down to Starbucks. And as you drink out of your cheap ass styrofoam cups. That were all prepared by prisoners who literally are in prison and fuel capitalism. Yes, complain about capitalism all you want, but you all support that shit. Because the truth is this. All the shit you guys drink out of, the Starbucks cups, the packages, all the things like Amazon's packages, Starbucks, Burger King, all these packages, these bags and stuff that we find in grocery stores for cheap in Walmart... Please believe that a lot of that stuff is prepared by prisoners. All the stuff that says made in the USA, those cheap ass panties people buy, or those cheap ass socks people buy from the, from the swap meet or from the grocery store, please believe that a lot of that stuff was done due to capitalism. Alexa Demi lying about her age is not that serious. I get it. She's in her 30s and she's playing a teenager. Now, for those of y'all who have no idea what I'm talking about, Alexa Demi is the girl that plays Maddie on Euphoria. And a lot of people have been criticizing her throughout the year because many people have been finding out that she's actually been lying about her age due to fit the quota in Hollywood. If you guys don't know, she plays a 17-year-old girl on the show Euphoria, but come to find out, she's probably in her 30s as far as we can tell. She's probably at least 32. 
Come to find out, this girl has pictures of her with Azalea Banks, her kicking it with the Kardashians in the early 2000s, and her even designing sunglasses for Nicki Minaj back in 2009. So a lot of people put two and two together and found out that she has to at least be in her 30s, but yet she looks so young. To the point where people have been making little, just literal dumbass jokes, like editing photos of her being in historical events, and then saying, oh, this is Alexa Demi in the 80s, this is Alexa Demi in the prehistoric times. Just poking fun at her, because you guys know that the younger crowd is the people who usually watch you for you. So due to the young demographic that watches the show, a lot of people have been poking fun at the fact that she's probably in her 30s, because a lot of these dates aren't adding up on top of that when she'd be doing interviews people would address her as a 20 year old and she wouldn't correct them you're almost 25 now but you've played high school in a few different projects in the past couple of years what is it like to sort of go back in time like that does it make you nostalgic for your own high school experience at all instead of correcting the age alexa responded honestly no i love schoolwork I love research and I love working, but I don't like being told what to do. A lot of times, Hollywood won't book you if you are over a certain age because they'll feel weird about it or they know it'll fuck up the relatability effect if the show appeals to a younger crowd. She really shouldn't be lying about her age, but I guess it goes to show you the insecurities that a lot of people truly have. And it's more so just a reflection of how society views people in their 30s and how society views aging in general. A lot of people are just afraid of getting older. And I guess you could say Alexa Demi just amplifies people's insecurities. And she really just reveals Hollywood's evil agenda. DNA tests should be mandatory for all people who have kids. It'll eliminate so much confusion and so much issues. I like Kelly Stamps, but her humble bragging is a little bit overbearing. I started watching her when she was making videos about being a minimalist, maximizing her time, utilizing her time, balling on a budget, and a whole bunch of other stuff like couponing and whatever the hell else she did. But her humble bragging is a little bit annoying. Girl, we get it. You blew up off YouTube, made a ton of money, got a ton of subscribers, and now you're going on these ruthless shopping sprees, going on these $5,000 hauls, being a material girl, whatever the fuck. Ball out, have fun, live your life, not hating. Good for you. Hustle. Whatever floats your boats and coats your throat. But at the end of the day, her humble bragging is really annoying and it starts to get overbearing. Stop letting your parents use your motherfucking credit and stop allowing them to put utilities on your name. Just because they fuck their shit up with a dumb big buck ass, that doesn't mean they should be doing the same shit to you and fucking up yours too. I have no respect for selfish ass, impulsive ass parents that literally use their children's name, put their name on bills, put their name on credit cards, and fuck up their credit score just for their own selfish needs. I have no respect for that at all. Never, ever, ever trust a bitch that uses their trauma or past as an excuse for why they mistreat you and other people. It's a scam, bitch. Run. People like that are manipulative as fuck and are seeking sympathy and are trying to deflect from their own self-accountability and their own demons. Watch out for motherfuckers who say, you know I've been through this, you know I've been hurt, you know I've been molested, you know I've been hurt, you know I've been cheated on before, that's why I'm the way I am. No, bitch, run. It's a scam. Don't let people use their past or their trauma or their trials and tribulations as an excuse for why they do fucked up shit that has nothing to do with anything. You are grown as fuck and you are way too damn old to be deflecting and pointing the finger at somebody else or your own issues. And if you're one of those people, stay the fuck away from me, bitch. It's not homophobic or biphobic if a woman doesn't want to date a guy that's bisexual or likes to dibble and dabble in the guys. I will say this now, that it's been an ongoing conversation for many, many years now. Every time you see these viral videos of women saying that they would never date a bisexual man or a man who has messed around with other men in the past. Cool. You see that one? <clears throat> would you ever date a bisexual guy, Amber? No. I just wouldn't be comfortable with it. Um... And I don't know why, I just feel that way. A Glamour survey found that 63% of women respondents wouldn't date a man who has ever had sex with another man. And a recent study found that straight women rate bi men as less attractive than straight men. There I say it, sexuality is a spectrum. And at the end of the day, not many people are completely straight and not that many people are completely gay and not that many people are completely bi. At the end of the day, people like what the fuck they like, will fuck what the fuck they want to fuck, and that just is what it is. But if a woman wants to date someone that's completely into her and who she presumes is heterosexual, let her have that right. This whole notion that it's homophobic and it's cringeworthy and it's odd that she's not into a guy that's done done and did it all is bullshit. It's bullshit. If a woman just wants a man that only likes women, that's perfectly fine. It doesn't make her homophobic or biphobic. Let her have that choice if she feels like it's a turn off to be with a man that has been with men. At the end of the day, it's her opinion if she wants to just be with a man who has only been with women. Because for a lot of women, they'd rather say they've been cheated on. They they rather say they've been cheated on 
with another bitch rather than finding out that their man cheated on them with another man. But then truth be told, that's the reason why a lot of men are scared to tell women that they're bisexual or that they're into guys. Because the truth is, a lot of time that leads to men lying about what they're into or what they've done. Because the truth is, a lot of men are only in the closet or only lying about who they've interacted with or been intimate with. Because in many cases, it would be a deal breaker for a lot of women if they found out that a man that they've been intimate with has been intimate with men, hence why a lot of men lie about the fact that they've never been with a man or they're not intimate at all because they know that a lot of women wouldn't look at them twice if they were to say that. Most people have kids for selfish reasons but won't admit it. Let's be honest, many people will sit up here and say, I want a kid by the time I'm 25, 28, 31, because a lot of y'all just want people to fucking take care of y'all so y'all don't end up being alone. The truth is, many people plan out having kids by the time they're 30, 35, 31, 32, because they want someone to be there, they want an aesthetic of having a child, and they don't want to feel left out because all their other friends have children. Having children for the aesthetic is selfish as fuck, and having children just for the sole purpose of feeling like, okay, my life is complete, let me add a child to the equation. That's selfish as fuck and wrong. You should have a lot to offer a child before you even say, yeah, um, yeah, I'm bored. I want something to add. A lot of people are only having kids for the aesthetic and they're not having kids because they want the actual experience of raising a child. Some of y'all are only having kids or most parents only have kids for the aesthetic because they had a kid by accident or because they had a kid because they feel like they had to because their peers were having kids. That's selfish as fuck because you don't get a second chance to say, okay, you know what? I changed my mind because once the kid is here, the kid is here. So truth be told, a lot of parents and a lot of people in general have kids for the aesthetic because they don't want to get too old, they don't want to be lonely, and they want to play dress up with a child or they want to treat a child like a retirement plan so they feel like having a kid around will make them feel a lot better so they'll have someone to fall back on just in case everybody in their lives abandon them. Bia is the next big thing and I think she'll be the next big female rapper, but I see her being very huge in upcoming year. I feel like she has a very bright future and I see something big in her. Bia is going to be huge very, very soon. I still don't see the hype of NBA Youngboy. I'm still trying to hear what the fuck y'all hear because I still can't get into his music. People are only scared of getting old and only scared of aging because they hate the fact that so much time is getting by. Anytime I meet somebody that says, ugh, I'm getting old, ugh, I'm going to be in my late 20s, ugh, I'm going to be 30, because those are people who generally wasted so much time procrastinating, being in a toxic ass relationship, and wasting their time doing bullshit that they really didn't want to do, but they stood in that situation for the past three to five years to please their family, friends, or significant other. At the end of the day, you only resent getting old, you only resent your birthdays because you have so many regrets of all the things that you wish you could have done or the things you could have tried, when in reality, all we have is the present moment and that means right now if you don't like your life or you're not happy with the situation that you're in right now just leave or just make another choice because the best thing about life is that you can always choose again a lot of y'all are procrastinating or are stuck in toxic relationships or were in toxic relationships that consumed most of your time and that's why you have so many regrets and so much resentment of getting older and older as the days go by the world stops for nobody and regardless you still have a lot of time even if you think you don't because if you want to pursue that venture, or you want to go for that opportunity, then do it. Because the time is going to go by regardless if you do it or you don't. So just do it anyway. Forex is not a scam. However, the motherfuckers who try to sell you these dumbass classes and courses on trying to teach you how to exchange on the foreign market, those motherfuckers are scammers. They be talking about how they're going to teach you how to flip money and make $50,000 a day on Forex. Nope. Those are the scammers because at the end of the day, the foreign exchange market is something that you can easily look up Google and do on your own if you just simply join the foreign exchange market. These people who try to make you join their Discord and join their WhatsApp group chat, scammers, frauds, run. Don't ever join these group chats or these courses because half these people, half these people literally make most of their income from teaching these dumb motherfuckers who can't make a quick Google search. Many of these full rags and get rich and passive income gurus and scammers, a lot of them prey on what the school system did to a lot of us. A lot of us have been preconditioned to go to school and pay for every piece of information and have somebody spoon feed us information while we take notes and forex scammers and forex teachers and forex currency passive income boot camp trainers they all profit off of that shit that the school system did to us so don't join these dumbass forex scams and boot camps because at the end of the day you can learn how to do that shit on your own by yourself without having anyone teach you most of these get rich quick gurus and these passive income gurus literally get rich from teaching people who don't know how to google search forex all that other bullshit like crypto stocks is not a scam, but the people who try to teach you how to do it or recruit you are literally making money off of you and they're making money off of teaching you and then make money off of you recruiting somebody else to their class. Don't fall for it. It's a scam, bitch. Run. And my final unpopular opinion is this. 
Life is way too short to be forcing shit with fake ass fucking friends. If your friends don't fuck with you like that, if you know deep down inside from looking at their eyes, the little stink faces they give you, the little awkward silences they give you, the fact that they don't even invite you out or acknowledge you, or you only invite them because you have no one else to talk to, or you only invite them to travel with you because you're scared to travel alone, those aren't your fucking friends. Life is too short to be faking shit and forcing shit. At the end of the day, hang out with people that fuck with you and like you. Like, you know, we see these shows like Girlfriends and we see all these shows like High School Musical. And we see these shows with all these people who've had friends for long years. But the truth is, you don't have to force or fake shit with people who you know damn well wouldn't reciprocate the same energy that you've given them. If you know that you've gone out of your way to give them rides, give them money, take care of them, pull through for them, listen to their issues, but they haven't done the same thing for you, why the fuck are you still cool with them? Life is just way too short to be faking shit and forcing shit. At the end of the day, if you don't fuck with somebody, stop inviting them out or stop answering their invitations and keep it moving. It is what it is. And if you don't fuck with them like that, don't talk to them. Don't hang out with them. Don't be in group chats with them. Don't hit them up. Just don't talk to them. Life is way too short for fake ass fucking friends. I get it. It's hard as fuck to make new fucking friends because making new friends isn't easy as it is. But go out there and meet new people and make new friends. Them same friends that you've had, some of them are jealous of you. Some of them don't like you. Some of them wish they had aspects of you or some of them never really liked you in general but only hang out with you because they were bored as fuck. Life is too short to have fill-ins at your table instead of VIP. So have VIP at your table instead of fill-ins because guess what? Worst case scenario, if you were ever in a car accident, your car got totaled, you were in some bullshit, who the fuck would you call out of all your friends to come pull through and help you out if they were living across the street or they lived in your city? Which friend would you call in your city if you were going through some shit? Some of y'all can't even name one because you don't know if you can even trust them 100%. Life is too short to be forcing shit and faking shit. So at the end of the day, hang out alone, be by yourself alone, and make new friends. And if it's not easy to make new friends, then be by yourself and the real friends will come to you naturally. Some of these people aren't really your damn friends and that's perfectly fine and okay. That was that for this video. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. I'm pretty sure people's feathers got ruffled. It is what the fuck it is. Unpopular opinions, you guys ask for it every single week. If you guys have any popular opinions, please be sure to leave them shits in the comment section down below. Tell me which popular opinion you agree with. Tell me which one ruffled your feathers a little bit and tell me which one had you side-eyeing me the most. I said what the fuck I said, you might change my mind, you might alter my opinion, and I might even do an update on popular opinions, but regardless, I said what the fuck I said, and I will never apologize, no matter what Twitter does, or what controversy does, or whoever drags me to a YouTube video. I said what the fuck I said. So please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, give your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. I'm gonna go fuck up the rest of this pizza, drink the rest of this wine, and yeah, that's that. Let me know what you guys wanna see next. Stream my podcast everywhere, join my Patreon, choice out this bitch. I put in pictures by my pillow, start to blush when somebody says your name. In my stomach there's a pain, see how you walk in my direction, I go the other way. I start to stutter when I speak, try to stand on my knees going, baby. What's happening to me? In the dark, can you tell me what it means? I lay my head on my pillow, yummy standing on my pillow. We should start for the side. It's the reason why you're always on my mind. When you come around, I get shy, baby. When I see you, see you. When I see you, baby. When I, I never know when you might walk by. So I gotta be right on time. When I see you, when I see you, yeah. I scribble X and O's in my notebook, checking how my hair and my nails look. I put myself in the zone. I get nervous when you call, so I'm lazy. I'm not. Oh, I see your face when I hear my favorite song. Should I send an email at home? You're the number one topic on the phone. I wonder if you know, do you have a clue? I let my head on my pillow. You got me standing on my pillow. Wish a star in the sky. What's the reason why? You're always on my mind. When you come around, I get shy. When I see you, 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 when I see you, baby, when I remember not when you might walk by. And I'm gonna go right on time. When I see you, 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 you sexy boy. You sexy boy. Something taken on how far me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm right on the mountain. Tell me the same thing I see. Oh, when you're about to get shy, when you're high, you're 
sunshine, I see you. This for you. This one's for you, Tasha. When I see you, Alexa, stop. Make a podcast. Here's your reminder. Make a podcast. Okay, that's all you get for free.